Hey Popverse, Veronica Valencia here, and I am with the talented and creative minds behind SpongeBob, the Title Zone. What can you tell us about it? Who wants to go? <laughs> okay, so uh, the Title Zone is sort of based on uh, the, the shows that we uh, loved growing up. Uh, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits. Uh, we thought it'd be fun to do a crossover episode where each of the different shows sort of like spend some time in this extra weird space. Like we, we tried to figure like, how can we make SpongeBob even weirder? And uh, <laughs> we thought this would be a good format for that. And when an animator says we wanted to make it even weirder, it's something yeah, special. Right. Yeah. It's going to be weird. Now, Nickelodeon is no stranger to, uh, stranger rather to crossover events, but SpongeBob has always kind of lived within its own universe, but now we are getting this crossover event. So why was now the time to do that? Well, part of the reason we haven't done any crossovers is everybody in SpongeLand is this big, so when you show up at any of the other shows, you just, you, it's, you're just kind of diminutive. But in this case, they're all our universe, they're all the same size, and Dana was the perfect tool to get between all the shows. You're such a tool! Yeah. <laughs> well, that actually leads into my next question is, SpongeBob has such a lovable cast of characters. How was Grandpat the one decided to be taking us on this multi, uh, you know, this multiverse journey? Well, the story uh, starts in the Patrick Show's universe, and since they have the, the, uh, the time door, the time closet, that was a good vehicle to get him through the uh, other shows. So you'll see that when you see and the episode. Scooters, so we didn't have to spend a lot of time yeah. watching him walk. Yeah. Right. We had a lot of we so much money on no walk cycles. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just wheels spinning. They put the little lines to make the wheels look like they're turning. I know the tricks. I know professional animation style. You know. <laughs> you know exactly how to get from point A to point B. That's right. <laughs> and how has recording the the crossover been different than recording the series? Oh, I don't know. We just do what they give us. <laughs> it's all, it's all, it's all just lunacy, uh, and and uh, yeah, we're we're just having fun and connecting with the material as best we can. Especially now, we're all in our closets on Zoom. Right. A lot of baffle behind A lot us. Of screaming from inside your house, where you have to tell your neighbor ahead of time. It's all good. We're just. <laughs> I was literally going to ask, did you have to debrief your neighbors? Like, if you hear screaming, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just working. They know. They know by now. They all know. Oh, yeah. yeah. They just wish we were drummers. That's how bad it is. They're no. like, gosh, I wish we had drummers next door. We had a voiceover people. <laughs> now, if any of your characters had the opportunity to visit themselves in the past or their otherworldly counterparts, what advice do you think they would give them? Or what do you think that encounter would be like? Uh, don't eat fish at a diner. <laughs> that is very important advice. Yes. I know for certain what Sandy's advice was to young Sandy, which is don't let Plankton get the recipe, which you have to watch Camp Coral to find him. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. now we're talking, yeah, yeah. And now, since the door to the crossover is open, if you could imagine the SpongeBob characters in any universe, not just necessarily the SpongeBob universe or other Nickelodeon shows, like any universe, where would you like to see them show up? I would like to see SpongeBob and Bugs Bunny. Oh, oh that'd be fun. Yeah. I'm picturing uh, Grandpa as like a Jedi master, like a going off against Yoda or something, who's older. Oh, he would be so heroic, yeah, yeah. He'd be something. I don't know if he'd be very effective, but he'd have a floppy lightsaber. And... I think I'd like to see Karen on the Enterprise helping. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Computer. Yeah. 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 Are there other franchises besides SpongeBob? <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, don't. Get out. <laughs> we don't let Mark out, yeah. yeah. No time. He's just focused laser focused, which is what you want. And finally, here at the Poppers, we celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics. What is something you are geeking out about right now that you're not working on? Oh, TV shows? It could be anything. Uh, the waffle fry booth looked amazing over here. They looked delicious. Did you get to try it? No, I didn't. The line was like seven hours long. You needed a fast pass and pay 110 <laughs> bucks for the gold level. It's kind of a whole thing. Like I, I smelled a few. I heard a review of it. That's about it. I recently 
finished the Bureau, which is a French spy series. It was awesome. Oh, I just watched Midnight Mass with my daughter on like Netflix Watch and FaceTime. She's already seen it, so she wanted me to FaceTime so she could watch my face the entire <laughs> time and see me scream and cringe and yeah, it's great. It's creepy. I'm geeking out because we're uh, following Gendy. That's right. <laughs> uh, the first three episodes of The Old Man, <laughs> they were amazing. <laughs> I just watched them over and over again. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us here today, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks, Veronica. Thank you.